Another remote desktop program that you can use in Linux is TeamViewer. I've never used it before, but let's give it a shot. I'm at teamviewer.com and I've clicked on download and you can see here that there is a version for Linux here and what we can do is we can download the uh, Debian Ubuntu 32-bit package so we'll do that and I'll just save the file okay so that's in, that's downloading right now and I'll pause the video and when it's done downloading we'll see if we can get it installed and get it working okay team viewers done downloading so we'll close this and we'll close our browser okay let's go find our downloaded package so what I'm gonna do is I'll do a CD downloads LS and there is our package our Debian package that we downloaded from the website so let's use the Debian package manager to install it so we'll say dpkg dash dash install and then team viewer underscore linux dot deb and hit enter and it says we need super user privileges which I forgot to put in so we'll start it off with a sudo space alright okay and looks like it is attempting to unpack team viewer 7 alright looks like it worked okay so I'll clear that out. Let's see if we can find it by searching for it here. Team Viewer 7. Okay, there it is. So I'll launch it and we'll take a quick look at it. Okay, here's Team Viewer. Okay, so TeamViewer is running on our Ubuntu Linux machine. I'm running this in a virtual box, and you can see it here. I'm going to need this ID and this password to connect to it. So you can see here your ID, right, and the password. All right, so I'm going to need those. And now I'll pull this to the side. And by the way, it seems that TeamViewer is used for much more than just remote desktop connections it looks like it could be used also for all kinds of purposes like uh, team meetings shared desktops um, teleconferencing video conferencing um, audio conferencing all kinds of um, extended meeting online meeting types of applications so anyway I'm gonna drag this to the side and if we're gonna do this we're going to need to set up a Windows client. So for the Windows client, I'm at teamviewer.com and here's Windows. And I'll scroll down here and see if we can get the Team Viewer full version. So I'll click download. And I'll save it to the desktop. Okay, we've downloaded Team Viewer to the desktop. I'll close that there it is I'm gonna run the installation on my Windows 7 client here once again I've got Linux running in a virtual box here to the side so we'll run this alright install personal non-commercial -commer use and okay okay alright now it's been installed let's launch it alright there it is and now what I need to do is to use it it looks like all I have to do is put in my partner ID which was right over here 416 let's say alright and remote control of the machine or file transfer so we'll say connecting to the partner put in the password and log on and there it is there is the team viewer connection and now I've got a remote desktop session 
can see that I could drag that around. Notice it's moving the remote machine as well. Let's see here. There it is. I'm controlling the remote machine with um, Team Viewer. And that's pretty nice. Let's see here. We've got a little session window down here at the bottom. Shows you your session. You can close all connections, voice, conference. This could be pretty useful, especially for myself as a teacher working with students. All right. Okay, so I've brought up the Team Viewer again, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit it. All right. And close this window. And then I'll launch it again, see if the password is the same. So with Team Viewer launched here on my Ubuntu Linux machine, I've got the ID that I'm going to need to connect to and the uh, temporary password. And every time you start Team Viewer, the password should be different. Also, if you want, what you can do is you can go to Extras and go to Options and look at some of the options you have for configuring it. Now, for um, let's see here, for security, if you want to set a stronger password for uh, that's always going to be available to you, so it doesn't change every time, then you could set a password here, and then that way, when you remote in, it'll always be the same, right? Um, and then the random password for spontaneous access, the one that changed, you could set set it for being a little bit. Uh, stronger than just four characters. You could set it for, let's say, six characters or um, eight characters or ten characters, something like that, right? Click OK. And now you can see that we've got an eight character password here, but still the password that I set, the permanent password that I set, will still be good here right and you can see that you can um, define what kind of remote access the people can have uh, with the meeting you can set up um, a lot of options here audio conferencing video conferencing you can set up a custom invitation email invitation here um, the other thing that you can do is you can blacklist set up a blacklist or an access list so that you can restrict access to just one ID or two IDs or something like that so that um, just general people that do not have that ID will not be allowed in. Okay. Another nice thing about this uh, team viewer and this is what I what I read online was that the way team viewer works is is that it sets up a tunnel and I believe it uses uh, UDP over port 80 so with that tunnel you, you do not have to open up ports on your router and port forward from your router if you're trying to connect to it from a remote location right now right now I'm just connecting from um, on the network here just locally so let's take a look let's see here I've got the password here um, and let's give it a try so we'll give it one more try here so I'm gonna pull this to the side and I've installed the um, Windows version right here of Team Viewer, right? So open that up. Okay, and there's the address that I want to connect to. Um, notice it here, right? Same address. And so then I'll just say connect to partner and then put in the password. Let me try this eight character password, or I can try the password that I set either way. So I'll try the password that I set to be static every time. And I'll hit OK and the connection is good and so that's with the permanent password 